Hi everyone. Here we are. This is uh, B C B C A dash one oh one introduction to computers and this is we'll just say week one. I'm gonna combine um, all the board shots in one week. So <clears throat> This I'm actually recording this on 9-1-14. So this is uh, the first week, and some of these slides will re um, will repeat. And so I'm going to get started. <clears throat> we talked about a few major things. Okay, Let's see if I can. Get started here. We talked about software. Talked about software, hardware, networks, and people. In the class, introduction to computers and information systems, it's really a combination of these things. We talk about uh, computing devices, what makes those computing devices work, um, how we move the data between locations, and probably the most important part, probably the most important part, are people. You know, how do people use it? How does it affect people? And so forth. Okay? So, <clears throat> I got started talking about data. Everything everything functions around data. Like, um, we talked about like your birth date, graduation date. Data then is converted into information. And that information is what is useful to us. Okay, so the information is what is useful to us. So what I have to do here is... Okay, I had a little fiasco there. I had to let the dog out. But anyway, so <clears throat> the example that I give here is birth date. <clears throat> Alright, so somebody's birth date is what will store, the computer will process that and give us somebody's age. The same thing, we would store a graduation date, a computer software can process that and give us what grade or class the student is in. We like to be able to do this from anywhere you know, do our work from anywhere, so we store the data, and nowadays we talk a lot about storing it in the cloud, and we'll learn about that. That way, that data can be processed and distributed anywhere via the Internet, so that's why networks are so important. Hardware is the equipment that actually does that. We talked about people like Michael Dell and Ted Waite um, started computer companies, for PCs back in the uh, early 80s, IBM did. And then people that design software, Bill Gates, you know, like Adobe creates software and so forth. And then we have some accommodations. Steve Jobs, they not only built the Apple computer, but they designed all the Apple software to do that. So he was really both. How much data is stored nowadays? There's a huge amount of data stored. It's, it's just phenomenal, and we'll talk more about that as the course goes. I'm going to move on. And this slide does a little bit of repeat, okay? So I'm not going to bore you. We talked about hardware. Software makes the hardware work. What do I say is the most important part of the whole thing? The software. The software solves a problem. The software takes the data and turns it into information. The software needs the hardware to run on, but software is the key. You can have the exact same hardware, great hardware, but which one you'll pick to use, what you'll use is the one that has the software to get your job done. Networks, moving the stuff around, people. Now we added a couple things here. We want everybody to be um, comfortable using technology to solve whatever problem they need to solve or to do whatever they need to do. We don't want people to be gun-shy of using computing devices. In this course, we'd like to move people from being not just a user,
but an expert. Somebody knows a little bit more about the technology so that they can make better decisions using technology in the world. And there are just tons of those. Okay. A uh, little review over here. Data, converted in information. New words. Raw facts. Organized facts. Okay. You know, this is the raw data, and we organize it into something meaningful. For example, here at the college, there's all kinds of information stored about the students. Okay, all kinds of, of I should say, data, raw facts stored about the students. Then, what the computer system does, takes that and processes it into something that means something to me. It gives me a class list for a certain class. Or any group. So you're a group, whatever class you are. I have a list of students that are in this class, and I have a few basic pieces of information about you. Really, not very much. I don't have your address or some of that stuff, but I definitely don't have your social security number. So we took the raw facts and organized it into something that has meaning to me. Organized facts, which is now information. Everything in the computer world is stored digitally using ones and zeros. And then we use some code like the American Standard Code of Information Interchange, ASCII, in the computer to represent something. For example, this bit right here in ASCII, those bits represent a capital A. So if you hold the shift key and hit a capital A and you're typing like a, in a text editor or um, Microsoft Word or something. This is what's actually represented in the computer. Okay, if you store it out on the disk, it's going to, if it's a magnetic storage, you know, store those with a magnetic no bit, a bit, and no, 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 no. So it'll store it magnetically representing ones and zeros. When you download a movie, <laughs> or you're using, getting a movie, or streaming a movie from Netflix, what's really coming into your device at home are a bunch of ones and zeros and then the software converts those ones and zeros into something that has meaning pictures slides and pictures on the screen I'm going to keep moving I'm going to try to make sure I don't go over uh, 10 minutes <clears throat> our next slide I mentioned it earlier here's the cloud and this cloud we're using to represent the internet This is a means of moving information uh, all over the world. An internet service provider, for example, the college, is the uh, ICN, the Iowa Communications Network. The college has a router connected into the internet there. And then two things happen on campus. There's a main part of the campus, and then there's the IT area that you're in a classroom in the IT area. On the main part of campus, there are lots of switches connected into a main switch. It goes through a firewall to protect it, and then that way you can get out the internet. For example, <clears throat> over here on the right, I have cable modem at my house through Mediacom. I have one of them small routing devices. It's a router, a switch and an access point so it allows me to connect with a laptop in um, my phone I have a PC in the basement connected in by wire and this allows me to get in to the internet and here at NIAC there's a way to come out and go to NIAC and go to some servers and maybe that server has Angel on it so if you can get into the internet through an ISP, you should be able to get to Angel at NIAC based on some type of address that we talk about later on. <clears throat> now, these things are all connected. For example, in the classroom, we have a PC in the classroom. It has a processor memory. We talked just briefly about flash memory too. What communicates with that is the operating system. What communicates with the operating system is some application, like a browser. A browser communicates with the operating system. 
That's why like uh, Firefox, IE, Chrome, they all communicate, they all communicate fine with an operating system like Windows. And then something like Safari, that would communicate with, let's say, Mac OS, a Macintosh computer. Either way, they communicate the hardware. The hardware is fundamentally the same in most of the devices. And then in the classroom, we have copper wire connected here, connected here, and connected here. And then, actually, I'll draw it a different color, connected from this router over to the main router on campus. That's fiber optic, so it uses light to transmit here. Okay. This cable uses uh, electrical impulses electricity to communicate there. <clears throat> and then we have, you know, five we have a variety of connections in the rest of campus also. All right. One last thing here, we also have we can connect in wirelessly. You can have your phone, you can connect to the Wi-Fi here on campus. And then that's another way to go through the system and get into the internet to move your data around. Slide four. This is a repeat. But I think I had this up for another class. Remember, software is the most important thing. They work together, send the data across the network. We want to be able to use technology <clears throat> and also under better understand where it is now and where it's going. We're on slide 5 of 7, so I think um, I'm a little over 10 minutes. So I'll try to um, pick up the pace here a little bit. This is a similar diagram, so what you notice new here, we have Google. Google's connected into the Internet. The Internet's full of routing devices in which it moves the information through. And it finds the best path to move these little blocks of information. <clears throat> whether we're getting the Google from home, the same example here, or whether we're getting the Google from the classroom. Moves through the routing devices, might take a different route, depending on the time of day. Little review, we have the operating system, the apps communicates the operating system, people communicate with the apps. The operating system communicates with the hardware, processor, memory, storage, and so forth. A switch allows us to connect lots of, lots of PCs to a network. The switch connects to a multi-layer device, which is both a switch and a router. And then we have these routing devices that can route traffic and figure out where the traffic should go. It's like the big uh, intersections. In the interstate. Do we get off here and go a different way or do we keep going straight? <clears throat> and then here's the main campus. Main campus. And we talked a little bit about that. There's um they have access points, you can communicate wirelessly, there's switches all over campus, and then there's servers, Angel and lots of other like the uh U Drive in our area or wherever you're, whatever drive you store yourself on, store your information on, on campus. Alright, <clears throat> a little about learning. We have, we have podcasts that you should view for the outline. We do then class discussion. View the podcast, look up the material for the outline, class discussion, work in class in order to better learn and understand the theory behind computing nowadays. Then there's skills, you know, basic skills, word processing, spreadsheets, databases, web work, web pages, and so forth. Some basic skills people should be aware of. <clears throat> and you won't be experts in all of them, but you should be aware of those skills and have some level of proficiency in doing that. So there are, again are podcasts you do for the assignments and projects. You practice the skills then with projects and then uh, that's done here I got assignments and projects then we take a skills based assessment in class. And one of those is coming up next week. 
And so, this is the last slide for week one. Last slide. Okay? Hardware, software. And what we're doing here is we're adding some things to software. Software tends to fall into a couple major categories. Applications. This is what us users typically see, the typical user sees, okay, in order to run the device, whatever it might be. Then there's system software. System software usually deals with the hardware. Usually deals with the hardware in some way. So we have the operating system, which most people are familiar with, Windows 7 or 8, um, Mac OS, Linux is an open source, uh, Android very much like Linux, but that's uh, for um, mobile devices, and iOS from Apple for mobile devices, and a lot of our devices nowadays are falling into, you know, either you have an iPhone or you have an Android, like Samsung or something phone. We have a Linux box you're going to work on later on in the term. Um, we'll look at some Mac examples, but most of our work is done on Windows. The OS then deals with the hardware. The apps deal with OS, and people deal with the app. One other thing I have here, I'll use a different color, utilities. Now utilities allow us to be a little more of an expert. And some of the examples for those would be uh, file management. You know, the hierarchy, you have a, a file folder, and under there you have a folder, a couple folders, and you organize your files based on that hierarchy. So a utility would be, for example, a file manager, or being able to defrag your hard drive, or check your memory, or check what programs are open. We use a task manager, or to change uh, passwords on your computer, or manage your virus software in your computer. Those are all utilities, and you can see being able to know how to use utility makes you a little more of an expert. That's it for week one.